Okay. So okay. when you say uh, start, I'll just start. <laughs> okay. Now, yes, uh, it's time. Okay. Now, now start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have been watching the presentations here in the LibreOffice conference, and this presentation is probably going to be a little bit different because it's not really a technical presentation. This is a presentation that we gave mostly at schools, at career centers, uh, where there are people that they are interested in technology. So we actually use this presentation to introduce them to the magical world of technology, and also tell them that when we talk about technology today, we are pretty much talking about free and open source software. Uh, I am Cesar Broad. I am the director of community engagement for the Linux Professional Institute for the Spanish and Portuguese speaking regions. And while I'm talking to you, I'm looking at the, the, the chat in Mattermost. So if you do have some questions, feel free to ask. It's going to be hopefully a very short presentation, I, although I tend to talk a little bit too much. Uh, we tend to divide the, the, the world of knowledge in two major categories. The exact science, where we have math, physics, chemistry, and the human science, where we have philosophy, sociology, and history. And we also have the hidden sciences, which is where the information and communication technologies are. Uh, in this presentation, I'll try to, to make a, a comparison with a character that I am pretty sure that everybody knows, which is uh, Harry Potter, and uh, the, the, the career of someone else that most of you, I'm pretty sure they know, which is uh, Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux. And if you think about it, it, it's probably, it probably has some um, things that have to do with your own career. So this is uh, me by the time of the 10th anniversary of, of Linux. So it was 20 years ago. And here I am with two people that are going to be part of this story that I'm going to tell you. Uh, John Mad Dog Hall to the left and Linus Torvalds to the right. Uh, one thing that I, well, I also participate in the train the trainer programs that we have in LPI. And one of the things that I try to do is to tell, to tell them how important it is to tell stories as long as you, uh, by the, aside the, the, the technical things that you want to teach. Because this uh, helps to, to, to get the ideas into, into the mind, into the head of the, the students. So this is why this is also going to be a story in here. Uh, when you, we think about Harry Potter, well, and here's the, the, the summary of Harry Potter from zero, from where he's born, when he's, he was born, until he got to 10 years old. Uh, he was born in July 31st, 1980. And Soon after that, in October of the same year, he became an orphan. Uh, in from that time until 1985, he was living with muggles, uh, regular people. And then finally, in 1985, in September 1st, 1991, he was enrolled in Hogwarts. Uh, one interesting thing is that one year before, one, one month before that, Linus Torvalds announced that he was creating an operating system, which then became Linux. Uh, I compared that uh, when Harry Potter first joined Hogwarts as the first experience in mob programming that he had with Hermione and Ron. And also I compared that with the first code that was written a few years before by Linus Torvalds. And the code just uh, printed Saris the best several times in his screen using basic, the basic programming language. Uh, when Harry Potter turned 13 years old, he participated in the Tournament of the Three Magics. And Albus Dumbledore said, opening that, uh, that tournament, eternal glory, this is what awaits the student who wins the Three Wizard Tournament. But for that, he will have to survive in three tasks, three extremely dangerous tasks. Well, 
this is where uh, actually happens. This is, this is what actually happens in the wonderful world of technology. It's not that easy. You will have several tasks that you need to fulfill in order to move ahead in, in your career. They're not, they, they are just not only three. Uh, so uh, in 995, uh, Harry Potter joins the Dumbledore army. So I compare that with his first project, on, with your first project in GitHub, GitLab, or other repository. And in June, he gets his ordinary wizarding level. So it is the equivalent of having a Linux Essential certification or entering into the world of LibreOffice, the Document Foundation certifications. In September 7, 1996, he then starts to getting lessons directly from Dumbledore, which I compare of uh, Linus Torvalds having his first encounter with John Maddockall, which is actually today the chairman of the board of the Linux Professional Institute. When only when he was quite older, like when from 26 to 39 years old, was that Harry Potter really had some uh, high level jobs, let's say that. He became uh, some, someone in the executive level of some companies. First, in 2007, as the head of the our department, and then in 2020, as the head of the Magic Police. So this was just two years ago when Harry Potter became the, the head of the Magical Police. A lot of people tell me, especially when I get into these uh, career events, is that in our world, in the world of technology, it's very difficult for one to, to know what uh, he will do, in, he or she will do in the future, in the future, because things are always changing. But you know, if you are really looking into what is going on in your field, you see that the future is not that difficult to predict. So this is a, an article. Uh, in, it was in it was released in December uh, 1999, and here it says it tells about the and the the, the link will, will be there for you also. I believe the, the the organization will provide you with the a copy of this presentation. But this is by uh, science fiction writer Dave Gerald. And uh, he took a look at the things that were happening in 1999. And he actually predicted that you would have a very, uh, a very fast and capable computer in your pocket. And, and he called this uh, a PITA, a Personal Information Telecommunications Agent. This means that he pretty much is telling us here what the cell phone uh, is right now. So if you are looking into what is going on, you can actually imagine what the future will be and will be prepared for the future. Uh, I also, this, this is from uh, a screenshot from a web page uh, here in Brazil very recently. And I always tell people, well, don't be to be very careful when you look into ads like that. Here pretty much says that you are gonna learn um, the whole science technology in a very short time. In this case, it's gonna be one month. And if you look into the structure of the course, basically uh, class one to 12 is Windows for beginners. Then uh, using Gmail uh, more, four more classes and just one class of Google, of how to use Google Drive. Of course, you are not going to become a, an ICT professional by taking this course. And there are several offers. You you probably come from very different regions of the, uh, of the world and you have these uh, offers like learn data sciences in the weekend. Uh, this just doesn't work. I do like though this example uh, from John Washington uh, and he published his studies on GitHub uh, and he called this the Coding Interview University. He wanted to, to start working for Google. So he studied for eight to 12 hours a day for several months. He actually studied eight months preparing for a Google interview. Uh, what happened is that he did not got the, the offer from Google that he wanted, but instead 
he used the same things that he had learned to uh, get uh, a job on Amazon. So you see, eight months, eight to 12 hours a day. So this, this is really uh, a serious way of studying into the, uh, to, to get into the wonderful world of technology. There's really no shortcuts, that there's really no tricks. Uh, I will just make a few calculations in here. So if you guys do remember from your, your high school, the, the rule of three or maybe elementary school, 10 hours a day, eight months. So if you have 10 hours a day to study, you need to, to, to study for eight months to get your job on Google or Amazon, or you can uh, apply the same kind of thing for any kind of company that you want to work for. And this is, of course, it will vary, but it's a, it's a good rule of the thumb rule or rule of a thumb to, to know how much you need to study. So you have five hours a day, you study eight months, so you get to the, to the rule of three. And I actually created a, a small calculator for you, which is the study time calculator that you can access here in this link. It's a very simple Google spreadsheet, and I use it a lot to, to tell uh, young people uh, the, the, the real time they will need to study to get a good job. Uh, and of course, you should learn about free and open technologies for several reasons. It's easy to build on top of what already exists. Uh, even if you think that you have a very good idea, uh, if you look into GitHub, GitLab, and things like that, you see that at least part of your, your idea is being built by other people. So use the repositories, tell, uh, look, uh, Use the search engines to look into things that uh, are closer to what you want to do, or if there aren't, there, there aren't things that are actually similar to what you want to do, and then you can contribute or modify that project, and this is what free and open software allows you to do. Uh, it is more secure. Uh, Eric Raymond, in this book, The Cathedral in the Bazaar, he mentioned that, uh, and he called it the, the Linus law, uh, given enough eyes, our bugs are shallow. So when the code is open, when you have access to the source code, uh, a lot of people are using, even if people cannot actually, all of them, program, as soon as they find a bug and they tell people about the bug, there will be a lot of people that know how to program and will be able to fix that bug. If there's a problem with security, the same kind of thing. Security is so important that even in our most uh, basic certification, Linux Essentials, we cover quite a lot of, of security. Well, it's easy to access. You know, you are in the, in the Document Foundation, the, the, the LibreOffice uh, maintainers. You just download. There's nothing dark between the lines of the license. You just download and you start to use it. It's very easy to adapt. And uh, we just had a very good example in the previous presentation on how LibreOffice is able to, to work uh, with several languages, uh, even writing vertically, horizontally, from right to left, to left to right. And this is thanks to a huge amount of contributor that it has from people that are in these different geographies. Uh, another example here, uh, you guys know that GIMP is the, the equivalent of Photoshop in our community. There is a project that's actually led by a Brazilian, which is called PhotoGimp. It is GIMP, but with an interface that will make easier for people that comes from Photoshop to start using GIMP. Uh, the adherence to standards, and this is something that's extremely important for both the, the, the Linux community, the LibreOffice community, for all of the, the free and open source community. Uh, the internet actually were, was created thanks to a mechanism called request for comments uh, where people would contribute to the today's existing standards, uh, starting with the name of hosts that we have an example in here. And uh, it doesn't need to be serious like the, 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 the RFC for the naming of hosts. Uh, it's pretty much uh, became uh, a poetry at the end. Uh, but the TCP IP evolved from the request for comments and other things like that. The internet exists 
sense, uh, thanks for standards. And also, of course, ODF is a, it's a, it's a very good example of a standard. Uh, if this is not enough to convince some people to come into the wonderful world of free and open source software, if we look into uh, the, the world today, like pretty much everything uses free and open source software. Uh, here is an example. This is a tweet from Elon Musk. Elon Musk himself is responding to a tweet uh, where someone asked about uh, the Linux kernel updated that they, they, they did for the, the cockpit system that was running on, on SpaceX. So if the CEO of a company such as SpaceX, Tesla, the boring company, is interested in replying himself uh, tweets regarding Linux, it's a, it's a signal that we all should pay attention to free and open source software. We also know that the cloud uh, is populated with pretty much the totality of free and open source software. The 500 um, supercomputers in most, uh, per, that most perform in the supercomputer world, they run on top of Linux. Uh, all of the Internet of Things, the mobile stuff, they are pretty much on top of free and open source software. So this is really a career that people should consider. Um, we just set up a partnership with the development, the, the document, I'm sorry, uh, with the, the LibreOffice uh, maintainers. And uh, one of the reasons that we set up that partnership is because we have a very similar mission. Like the Linux Professional Institute promotes the use of free and open technologies by elevating the people who work with them. And listening to some of the presentations in here, what I can see is that you are all the time really elevating the people that work with uh, the Document Foundation with LibreOffice. Um, we are a nonprofit organization founded in 1999 in Canada. Uh, we are, our group is very small. We are about 50 people all over the world, so we do look with, uh, we do work with our regional partners <clears throat> that are all over the world, and we are independent of Linux vendors and distribution. And, well, since quite a long time right now, we have been living uh, from our certifications. There is no other type of income into the LPI profession, into the Linux Professional Institute, other than, than our certifications. So this means that people actually like our certifications. And even during the pandemic times, a lot of new partners have reached out to us in order because people people discovered that in the you can now, well, they knew that, but the the social isolation times actually enhanced that knowledge that you can sell your services to all over the world. And certifications become very important as credentials to show people that you actually know the kind of thing that you're saying that you know. Uh, here is just a summary of our certifications tracks. We have the essential tracks. Today we have Linux essentials. Soon we have we'll have web development development essentials. <clears throat> then we have our Linux professional track, which starts with LPIC one, the Linux administrator. Then the Linux engineer, well, pick two, which is actually a, a Linux networked administrator. Then we have our specialties, I'll pick three. Uh, now we have security, mixed environment, virtualization, and high availability. And soon we'll have some other specializations also. Um, then in the open technology, we'll have the DevOps tools engineer and the ex uh, this already exists and the BSD specialist. The BSD specialist is because the, the BSD, the Berkeley Software uh, Division, they, which produced the free BSD, open BSD, and net BSD, they thought that they should concentrate on their, dis, uh, on their BSD based distributions and let someone else take care of their certifications. So they came to, to LPI and we adopted their certification and we actually put that, their certification in our standards. I am pretty sure that part of our collaboration with the Document Foundation is actually to if not uh, having some of your certifications 
coming into the, the, the LPI tracks, at least work together to improve our certifications together. Because you, you guys already have a lot of experience into, into that. And also, a lot of C-level executives in the companies, they are, start to, they, they are facing with more and more free and open source uh, software inside their companies. And they, most of the times, they are not sure uh, how to hire free and open source services products uh, and people who work with that. So we are preparing the BOSS certification, which is the business of open source, which is going to be a, a C-level certification. <clears throat> this is where we are in the world. So we are in all of the areas that are in yellow. And we do hope that we soon all the world will be covered in yellow. Uh, soon before the pandemic started, we were working with the with Cuba and we had our first people certified in Cuba. Fortunately, unfortunately, the social isolation does not allow us to, to move too much, but we are still developing work with Cuba and of course several other countries in the world. <clears throat> Getting closer to the end, another question that I receive lots of the time is should I learn to program? The quick answer is yes, you should learn how to program. Even Companies, uh, and here is just one example, Disney, uh, which has its project Rosie 2.0, that other than including women into the ICT industry, something that inside LPI you also try to do actually is part of our objectives and key results to work with inclusion and diversity. So we are working, working some programs like that. And this project by Disney here, that is a, a, an example, they are training their... Uh, office workers on Python, so they will be able to move up in their career inside the, the company. Uh, some hints, like if you want to, if you are going to, to know how to program, start learning programming logic. There are several and several resources on YouTube, once you on YouTube and, and other places. Uh, once you learn programming logic, we'll be able to program pretty much all languages. Choose a programming language. Don't get into the fight of, oh, this is better, this is better. Look into uh, some project that appeals to you. And what uh, is the lang programming language that this project uses? So start by learning that. Uh, as soon as you learn one language, it will be easily uh, transferring your skill to, to another language. You start programming with a modern ADI, AP, IDE. Uh, I am kind of uh, a big fan of the Jupyter Notebook, so you can take a look at that in the internet. I like the fact that uh, it is uh, web-based and also that there are several examples in there for you to start. And <clears throat> tell everyone what you're doing. Uh, Linus Torvalds used to say, release early and often. Some people think that, well, I have this idea, I'll hide this idea, and when it's ready, I'll show it to the world. Uh, you know, the ideas are there. They are everywhere. And if you don't start working your ideas, some other people will. So tell everyone what you are doing. And by doing that, start building your portfolio. Uh, it's important that you have your work published in the web. So people will be able to look into it and actually know uh, how you are advancing in your career. Most companies are learning that rather than hiring people with a specific knowledge, uh, it's uh, more valuable to hire people that are able to learn anything. Uh, just uh, the, the URL for the, the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, if you also look, look for Octoverse on github.com, you see projects that are trending and things that you should look into. And I want to, to allow you some time for, for, for questions. So this is, this is me, uh, cbroad at lpi.org. Uh, this is jo Jolly Villa, Villa Visa, who also helped me with this presentation, the first time that we provided this presentation. Uh, and you will find me in all social, social networks with the nickname of Cedar Broad. So 
uh, feel free to ask questions uh, now or send me an, an email. I do receive a lot of email, but I do reply to all of them. So if it takes some time for me to reply to your email, just forward the same email to, to me. It will bump into the top of my inbox again, and I will reply to you. Uh, thank you very much for the LibreOffice community, for the document the Document Foundation to allow me to, to be speaking here to you. Uh, sorry, my voice is still a sleepy one. Uh, although it's 9.30 here in Brazil, I was in another conference until late night, but I wanted to make sure that I will be here talking to you. And with me in the chat are more people from LPI, including I am seeing Juan Ibarra in here. Uh, and Hernan Pachas. Uh, yesterday, we also had Ivan Leibovitz, so we are trying to be as present as possible here in your wonderful conference. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm open for, for questions. Thank, I... thank you for the presentation. <laughs> so, any, any question? I'm looking into the chat and I'm not mm -hmm. seeing and in Telegram. I'm not mm -hmm. seeing any questions. So, or I scared people. Uh, comment is uh, loving the uh, presentation with <laughs> this. Or, uh, yes, or only comment. <laughs> Great. Well, again, thank you guys. Uh, hopefully in the in the next editions of your conference uh, mm -hmm. and after we'll be talking with the Document Foundation uh, the following weeks and find out ways where we can work together. Uh, we are just starting our partnership. I believe as our mission is very close. Uh, yeah, yeah. Foundation and <laughs> we'll we'll be We'll have several things to do in the future. And also, you know, pretty much everyone that uses Linux in the desktop is also a user of LibreOffice. So we'll, I, I believe we'll find a lot of creative ways of getting our community work together. And uh, as you invited us for your event, we'll surely invite you guys for our events. And well, we'll just talk so, and see what we can do together. So, sorry, I one question in chat. <laughs> How? Has LPI, um, sorry, uh, uh, can you see the chat? How has LPI, the, I don't, uh, I don't know, see the sentence. Can, can you paste the, the question here in the, in the chat? Okay. Okay, okay. How has LPI dealt with the problem of people thinking Linux is not good? Yeah. Uh, this is a very, very good question. Uh, and the, the answer to that has become easier and easier and easier as we move on. Uh, we, we basically tell people, well, we thought uh, at some point that we would also dominate the desktop computing, which we didn't. Like there's still a lot more uh, windows uh, in the desktop computers. Uh, and But we now have more um, desktop computers. There are more Linux desktop computers than Mac OS computers. So we are important in this market. But if you consider the whole mobile uh, computing, uh, Almost the totality of the tablets and the mobile mobile phones, they are running Android. And Android is a Linux distribution. If you look into everything that is running in the cloud, more than 85% runs on Linux. If you look into the 500 fastest, compu fastest computers in the world, they are running Linux. They, they, Linux is the only operating system in Mars mm -hmm. And Linux dominates the, the, the servers around uh, the, the, the globe. Like Starlink, the, the, the soon going to be more than 100,000 satellites. They are all running Linux. So if Linux is not good, 
it wouldn't be the majority of these things. If you think about any kind of uh, embedded system uh, in cars, in your vacuum at your home, they are all, all running Linux. So uh, if it was not that good, like it would be Windows or Mac OS running these kind of things, but it is Linux. So Linux really is really, really good. Okay. I, I think that uh, we have reached our time in here. I'm, I'm glad <laughs> I was able to finish in, in half an hour as you guys asked me. But, yeah. you know, I, uh, I provide you my email. I'll be looking and both myself and uh, my friends from LPI will be present in the, in the Telegram chat. So do feel free to, to, to ask questions for us. Thank you for your presentation, Cesar. <laughs> Thank you. Chingji, uh, am I yes. pronouncing the name? Okay, Chingji. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Chingji. Thank you, Cesar. <laughs> bye bye, all. See bye. you soon.